To build a gunboat, we need a refined materials or R mats and a shipyard. So if we press M to open our map and we look for the anchor icon on the map, we can see that that is the shipyard. And if we come to the shipyard building and we press E to open it up in the production panel, we can see that the last option is the type C Karen, the gunboat, and that it will cost us 125 refined materials. For the Wardens, the last option is the 74B1 Ronan gunship, and that one will cost 140 armats. Now, refined materials can be made in a refinery with the use of components, and that will turn 20 components into a one refined material. I brought refined materials with me, so if we come to our truck and we press E to open it up, I can grab my refined materials, press a 1 to equip my hammer, and we walk on to shipyard. We press E to open it up, and to start the build, we come to the production panel, and we left-click on the icon of the gunboat. We walk up to the blueprint and hold down the left mouse button to hammer in the refined materials. When the gunboat is finished, we can come up to it. If we open up the inventory, we can see in the top left that there is an orange lock icon. And this means that we can reserve this gunboat into our personal stockpile. Below that, we can see the inventory slots for the different types of ammunition. These different types of ammunition depend on which mounted weapons we have mounted onto our gunboat. And we'll always have the three types of mortar shells because the main gun of a gunboat is a mortar turret. In the fuel status panel, we can see just like any newly built or newly pulled vehicle that we have a tiny bit of diesel. In the actions panel, we can uh, lock our gunboat and we can reserve it to our active squad. And if we reserve it to our active squad, this means that if there's ammunition inside, people cannot take it out. There is a liquid container just behind the gunboat. So if we press E to open up the uh, gunboat again, we can come to the fuel status panel and click the refuel button. We can see that that threw out a hose between the liquid container and the gunboat. And now to get onto our gunboat, we can walk up to the side of the gunboat and press spacebar to climb on. On the gunboat, we can hop into the driver's seat by pressing a Q. And when we do, we can see that our camera zooms out quite a bit. Both the Colonial and the Warden gunboat have a mortar turret as their main armament. In the Colonial gunboat, it is the most forward turret. And on the Warden gunboat, it is the turret that is accessible from below deck. To load our gunboat with mortar shells, we cannot use crated mortar shells, but we need uncrated mortar shells. So if we have mortar shells in crates, we need to first bring them to a stockpile building. So that is something like a town hall, a relic base, a safe house, or a bunker base, or a border base. And when we see in the bottom left, press E to use safe house, we open it up. We right click on the crates in our truck and say submit all to stockpile that will put the mortar shells into the stockpile. Now to retrieve them, we can simply a shift click on the mortar shell icons in the stockpile of the safe house and that will retrieve three at a time. We take three shells of each type. With the unpackaged shells in our truck, we come to our gunboat. We press Q to hop out. We press E to open the inventory of our truck and we grab two shells of each type. We come to our gunboat and when we are close, we press E to open up the inventory and now with the inventory open, we can see that the gunboat at maximum holds 100 heavy explosive mortar shells, 100 shrapnel mortar shells and 30 flare mortar shells. We press Q to hop in and when we do, we can see in the top left that the currently selected mortar shell type is the heavy explosive mortar shell. We can see that we have three of that type in the inventory. We can also see below that that we have not loaded any shell into the mortar. To change the mortar shell type, we can press F and we can see that in the top left that changes to the shrapnel shell. Now, if we want to put a shrapnel mortar shell into our uh, turret, we can press R that will load one of the shrapnel shells into the turret and we can see that we have one left 
in the inventory. Now with the shrapnel in our turret, we can press F to change again to the flare shell. We can see that our selected shell is still the shrapnel shell, but that the flare shells are the next to go. So if we now press R, that will unload the shrapnel shell and will load in the flare shell. Now to move to heavy explosive mortar shells, we can change our fire mode to heavy explosive mortar shells. Even though we have a flare shell loaded, we can press R that will unload the flare shell and will load the heavy explosive shell. In the middle, we can see we have an indicator for our distance that we are firing at, the azimuth we're firing at and which dark and which fire mode we are using. We are currently in indirect fire mode. To change the distance of our mortar turret, we can simply use the scroll wheel and that will change the minimum distance of 75 meters to a maximum of 100 and anything in between. To change the azimuth, we can hold down the right mouse button and that will rotate the turret the turret rotation on the colonial gunboat is about 270 degrees. And on the warden gunboat, it is 360 degrees. And as we can see, to change our fire mode, we can press shift F. And when we did, we changed from indirect fire mode to direct fire mode. When we are in direct fire mode, we lose the distance indicator. And that is because the direct fire mode basically fires shells straight ahead. So the shell will travel to the maximum distance or it will explode on impact if anything is in between our turret and the maximum distance. To guide our shots in indirect fire mode, we can come to the spotter position, which is next to the driver's position. And in the warden gunboat, it is to the right of the gunner's position. We press Q to hop in and when we do we can see that our camera zooms out quite a lot and if we hold down the right mouse button we can see that we are looking out. The maximum distance we can uh, look out to is about 230 meters. Because it is dark we can use one of the flare shells to see better so we press F to go to our uh, flare shells. We press R to load one into our turret. We can see that it has a loaded one and now if we uh, left click we will fire a flare shell at that position and if we come to the spotter's position we can see that at a distance of 100 meters and at an azimuth of 199 is our flare shell. When we are in the mortar turret and we press shift E to go to direct fire mode, these shells will not go in an arc but they will go in a straight line to maximum range or till they hit something that is before maximum range. With a shell in our turret, if we try to aim past this rock and we fire, we can see that our shell will immediately explode when it hits the rock. If we now go into indirect fire mode and we have the same azimuth, but we a left click, we can see that we shoot over the rock and it will not impact on the rock. All the way in the front of the gunboat is a place for a person to sit and to place a tripod gun. If we try to embark on that position by pressing Q, we can see that it says seat is missing mounted weapon. So we first need to mount a weapon to this position before we can enter it. If we come to the truck that I prepared earlier, we can press E to open its inventory and grab, for instance, the Cutler Foe Breaker, which is a mounted RPG launcher. That is a tripod weapon, so we will carry it over our shoulder. If we now press B to open the build menu, we can see that the blueprint snaps to the back mount of the gunboat. To place it, we can simply uh, left click and that will start placing the foe breaker on the back of our gunboat. If we now come on board of our gunboat and we press E to open the inventory, we can see that that opened up the inventory slot for RPGs. Now, if we come to the truck again and we press E to open it up and for instance, we grab the red catcher, which is a heavy machine gun, we can bring that to the front and when we are near the front mount, we press a B to open the build menu. See that the blueprint snaps to the front mount. We left click to place the red catcher. Come to the truck and we load up some ammo. So we grab the ammo for the red catcher and we grab some RPGs for the foe breaker. 
We'll come to the shipyards onto our ship, press E to open the inventory and place the RPGs in the RPG slots. And if we place the 12.7 millimeter into the inventory, it automatically goes into the MG magazine slot. We now come below deck over here and we press Q. We see that we hop into the front mounted gun. We can press R to reload. Right click to aim our uh, red catcher and left click to fire the red catcher. To come out of this mounted weapon, we simply press Q. If we come to the foe breaker, we can press a Q to mount the foe breaker. In the top left, we can see that we currently have a two RPGs in the inventory of the gunboat and that there are no RPGs loaded into the foe breaker itself. So if we press R, we load in one RPG. And if we press R again, we load in another. Now it is a right click to aim and a left click to fire. If we want to take out the red catcher in the bow, we can press E to open the inventory of our gunship. We select the detach tripod weapon and it tells us that the ammo slot needs to be empty. So if there's no ammo for the red catcher and no ammo for the bow breaker, we can dismantle both. So first we are in the front, so we click detach tripod weapon. That will take out the red catcher. It will drop it on the ground. So if you want to take it off board, you have to press V, then you are carrying the red catcher. We come to our truck and press V to submit the red catcher. If we press E to open it up, we can see that in the truck is the last mounted weapon for the wardens which is the mounted bone saw which shoots arc rpgs we can grab that and an arc rpg as well we walk to the gunboat come below deck press b to get the blueprint place the blueprint in the front mount press q to hop in and if we now try to reload we can see it's not reloading and that is because we need the arc rpg inside the inventory of the gunboat we press on the arc rpg that goes into the inventory of the gunboat and we can see that that at most holds eight arc rpgs or if we install two bone souls it will be 16. so we come to the front mount press q to hop in we can see in the top left that there is one in the inventory none in the bone saw so we press r and now we can see that our inventory is empty but that we have one equipped in the bone saw if we now hold down the right mouse button we get the arc of the arc rpg and if we want to fire, we can simply left click and that will fire the arc RPG. To detach the foe breaker, we come to the back of the gunship. We press E to open the inventory. We come to the actions panel and click detach tripod weapons. With it detached, we can see that if we press shift E, there are dropped items and our cutler foe breaker. So if we open the dropped items, we can see that there is one RPG and that RPG was inside the foe breaker. To grab the foe breaker, we simply press V because it was dropped on the ground and we climb. We come towards our truck and when we're close to the truck, we press V to submit the foe breaker. Besides the main mortar turret, the Colonial gunboat has a two tripod mounts on either side of the gunboat. We have one here and one here. So we can use a tripod weapons to uh, mount on our gunboat. So if we come to our truck over here that has all the types of tripod weapons, we can, for instance, take the Typhoon. With the Typhoon over our shoulder, uh, we take the 20 millimeter ammo that goes with the Typhoon gun. When we are on deck of the gunboat, we can press a B to try to mount the Typhoon onto one of the tripod mounts. So if we hover over this tripod mount, we can see that the blueprint snaps to that tripod and the same goes over there. So if we want to put it here, we can a left click that will start mounting the Typhoon. And when we did and we press E to open the inventory of our gunboat, we can see that one of the previously crossed off ammo slots is now the 20 millimeter ammo slot. So we can put in our 20 millimeter ammo. We can come to the Typhoon, press a Q to hop in. And if we press R, we can reload our 20 millimeter Typhoon. We can hold down the right mouse button and that will aim and we can left click to fire. If we want to mount another gun on the other tripod, we can come to our truck again. Press E to open the truck's inventory. For instance, we take the Fissura. 
which is the grenade thrower, we can take tremola grenades and smoke grenades. With these in our backpack, we come to our gunboat. Climb on board of our gunboat, we come to the tripod on the other side. We press B to mount it. And when we see the blueprint, we left click. That will mount our fissura. We can then press E to open our inventory of our gunboat and we can see that three of the crossed off ammo slots are now the grenade ammo slots. Now currently gas grenades aren't researched yet so I don't have those but we can at least put our tremolas and our smoke grenades in. As we can see they each have their own maximum so we can have a 12 tremolas and uh, four smoke grenades and a maximum of four gas grenades. We press Q to mount the fissura and in the top left we can see that currently we have the tremola grenade selected and that we have two of those in the inventory. We can press F to change to our different grenade type. So after we pressed F it changed to the smoke grenade. Now if we press F again we don't get to the gas grenade because we don't have gas grenades in our inventory. It will go straight to the tremola. So if we want to have smoke grenades, we can press R to reload. But if we change our mind and we want to have tremola grenades, we can press F to change to tremola grenades, press R. This will unload the smoke grenade and will load one of the tremola grenades. To fire, simply hold down the right mouse button. This will show us the arc at which the grenade will go and we can left click to fire our tremola grenade. To take the guns off the mounts, we come to the side where we want to pull off the gun. So if we want to pull off the fissura, we come to the side of the fissura. We press E to open the inventory of our gunboat. And in the actions panel, we click detach tripod weapon. If we do, it says ammo slot must be empty. So we have to pull out the grenades. And when we do, we can click detach tripod weapon. And that will start detaching it from the tripod. This will put the fissura on deck. To pick up the fissura, we can simply press V and that will pick up the large item. We can put it inside our truck. If, for instance, we grab the Lamentum and some 12.7 ammo, come to the tripod mount over here, press B, see the blueprint, a left click to place it. We press E to open the inventory of our gunboat and we see that we now have a slot for the 12.7 millimeter ammo and we can see that at maximum it holds 30 magazines. We can press Q to hop onto our Lamentum, press R to reload. Then we can hold down the right mouse button, a left click to fire. If we press R to reload while there is still a not full magazine of ammunition in the Lamentum, we will lose that magazine that is already in the Lamentum. So if we press R right now with only four shots fired, we can see that we reload and that we have a full magazine in our Lamentum. But if we press Q to let go of the Lamentum and we press E to open the inventory, we can see that we do not have the partially filled magazine that is gone. We can detach the Lamentum by pressing E to open the inventory of the gunboat in the actions panel, clicking the detach tripod weapon and that will take off the tripod weapon. When we do, it will take out the uh, full magazine of 12.7 ammo. We can press shift E to get the interaction drop down menu. And if we open the dropped items, we can see that that is where our magazine is. So we can grab that magazine. If we now press V, we can pick up the Lamentum. The last mounted option on the Colonial Gunboat is the Daucus or the Infantry Support Gun or ISG. That shoots 30 millimeter shells. So we can bring that to our gunboat, come to the tripod mount, press B, deploy it on the tripod mount. Press E to open the inventory of our gunboat and we can see that one of our ammo slots is now the uh, 30 millimeter ammo. We can have at maximum 14 shells inside the gunboat. So we put our shells in, come to the ISG, press Q to uh, take a hold of it, press R to reload, right mouse button to aim and left mouse button to fire. As we can see, a gunboat is too big to fit under a bridge. So in the bottom left, luckily, it tells us when we're close to a bridge that we can open it by pressing E. So we press E, that will open up the bridge. And once the bridge is fully open, we can drive through. And once we are through, we can press E to close the bridge behind us. Same is true for real bridges, a gunboat doesn't fit under them, so you have to open them.
To travel from one hex to the next hex, all you need to do is just uh, sail your gunboat all the way to the border. When you're close to the border, in the bottom left, we can see that it says press E to travel Clan's Head Valley. So we press E and that will travel us over to Clan's Head Valley. Since our gunboat is reservable, we can come to the seaport where we have a personal stockpile. We can press E to open up the seaport. In the seaport menu, we make sure that we select our personal uh, stockpile. And in the actions panel, we can click the submit vehicle button. That will put the gunboat away and will put us on the uh, dock of the uh, seaport. To pull out a gunboat you have stored in your personal stockpile, you simply come to the seaport where you have it stored. You press E to open up its menu. You make sure that you go to your personal stockpile. In the vehicles tab, you can see your gunboat. And if you simply uh, left click on your gunboat, it will start assembling your gunboat and it will put it on the side of the seaport. And just as with building, if we press E to open it, we can see that there is a tiny bit of diesel inside the motorboat. The gunboat has armor just like a, a tank has and it also has a subsystem namely the turret. As we can see currently the turret is disabled so if we come to our driver's seat and we press Q to hop in we can see in the top left that indeed we have the icon for the disabled turret. We can repair our uh, gunboat at a shipyard and we press M to open the map and if we press spacebar we will center on ourselves and we can look for the anchor icon. The anchor icon on the map is a shipyard. To repair our gunboat at the shipyard we have to dock our gunboat at the shipyard like this. We can press a Q to hop off of our driver's seat. We can press shift E and that will give us the interaction drop down. If we now open the shipyard, we can see in the actions panel that there is the icon of the crossed tools. If we hover over it, we can see that it will instantaneously repair our ship. It will repair our health subsystems and armor and it will require 50 basic materials. So there is 50 basic materials in the inventory of the shipyard. So we can simply uh, left click on the full repair button and we can see that it says vehicle fully repaired. Prepared. If we now escape out, we can see that indeed our front turret isn't smoking anymore. And if we hop into our driver's seat and we can see that the icon of the damaged turret is gone as well.